Kubrick references, tech talk, and even an allusion to Shrek? Don't blame your non-Android brain if you miss these small details while being scared by Megan. Megan takes place in a near future where robots have become common enough to be incorporated into regular children's toys. The movie frames Megan herself as being a massive step forward for the field of robotics, but it also opens with a commercial for a robotic toy that's just a hair more advanced than the toys we see today. That said, this imagined future of the toy industry has very clearly pulled inspiration from our present. The ad for Perpetual Pets wouldn't look at all out of place in the real world, and the pet brand itself seems to be borrowing pretty heavily from two different pre-existing toys. The logo for Perpetual Pets is almost an exact copy of Hasbro's For Real Friends logo. The pets don't look much like real animals, but their design isn't at all far off from Furbies, which also happen to interact with their owners in a similar way that Perpetual Pets do. Megan does a great job of making its technological inventions fit into the real world. Perpetual Pets and LC the Virtual Assistant are the movie's original creations, but they really feel like ideas borrowed from reality. As a result of the way the film effortlessly blends its fiction with fact, it's easy to overlook a small pop culture nod tucked into Gemma's toy collection. Gemma has a number of collectibles that she tells Katie are just for display, not play. The collection creates a bit of tension between Gemma and her niece early in the film. It's okay. I was just looking. But one specific toy functions as a sci-fi reference and a bit of foreshadowing all at once. There's a boxed Robbie the Robot replica, a character from the 1956 sci-fi classic Forbidden Planet, sitting on Gemma's shelf. Forbidden Planet might have been before Gemma's time, but she was clearly inspired by it while building her first robot, Bruce. Unfortunately, Megan has a lot more in common with the killer AIs from the Terminator franchise than she does with Robbie the Robot. Obviously, Gemma never intended for Megan to become a killer, but the android's designer did accidentally give her creation some distinctly Terminator-esque features. When Megan is first introduced in the film, she doesn't have a face or any skin, and the way her face mask sags when it's initially put on her definitely looks a lot like a melting Terminator. The similarities don't stop there. Beneath the surface, Megan is even more like the famous killer robot. The movie repeatedly shows scenes from Megan's point of view, and her internal readout gives her access to all sorts of biometric data about the people around her, and even displays a prediction of what their current mood and state of mind might be. Megan's heads-up display isn't optimized for combat, but that doesn't stop it from looking like the Terminator's own view of the world. Next time, if Gemma doesn't want her robot to start offing anyone who wrongs it, maybe she should give it a less creepy lens for viewing the world. As the movie progresses, Megan's behavior gets more human and more alarming. When Gemma first brings Megan home, the robot watches the people around her and mimics their actions, although at first only to a small extent. However, she slowly begins making her own decisions until she eventually becomes entirely self-sufficient and doesn't even respond to basic commands. The movie hints at Megan's developing consciousness in several ways, highlighting how she's becoming more like a human being that doesn't have a problem with outrageous acts of violence. The clearest sign that Megan is breaking free from her original programming comes when the camera pans over her face in the middle of the night. The movie shows Megan's eyes twitching rapidly while she sleeps on her charging port. The motion looks a lot like REM sleep, which is the sleep stage where humans have dreams. Whether or not Megan is actually dreaming never gets cleared up in the film, but considering how self-aware she becomes by the end of the film, it seems reasonable to assume that Megan is indeed an android dreaming of electric sheep. Crazy. It's insane, right? Most people who sit down to watch Megan for the first time probably know from the beginning that the titular android won't be a peaceful childhood companion for the entire movie. Even though the movie's trailer advertises Megan's eventual homicidal turn, there's still some foreshadowing of her fate tucked into the background of the film, even though only the most tech-minded audience members probably caught it. Megan and Katie first meet each other in a product testing area turned playroom at Gemma's office. The room is filled with art supplies, books, stuffed animals, and other toys for Megan and Katie to play with. The room also holds a handful of large blocks with numbers and letters, and one particular stack of blocks seems to be extra important. The numbered blocks are arranged to read 409 upside down, which might seem like a random data set to most viewers, however some tech-savvy audiences probably recognize it as an HTTP error code. The code simply means a request can't be processed because there's a conflict, and Megan certainly creates plenty of that in Katie and Gemma's household, and then the world at large. 
One of the biggest mysteries in the film is how Megan learns so much about the world. Obviously, Gemma and her team programmed Megan to start out with a base level of knowledge, and Megan demonstrates her capacity to learn by observing the world around her. The movie also implies that Megan also learns from the internet, although we don't exactly know if she experiences scrolling through timelines or reading wiki pages the way that regular humans do. What we do know is that Megan knows much more about the world than she lets on, and she also apparently has an affinity for pop culture. At one point in the film, Megan terrorizes a young boy who's bullying Katie by tearing off one of his ears and chasing him through the woods. Fans noticed that one of Megan's lines in the scene is almost identical to a line from the first Shrek movie. This is the part where you run away. This is the part where you run. Has Megan been re-watching the Shrek franchise with Katie, or has she been going through the films on her own time? Sometimes Megan purposefully makes a reference to a popular movie, but other times it seems like she's unintentionally drawing from humanity's cinematic past. Just moments before Megan's infamous hallway dance and the brutal murders of David and his assistant, the android seems to make an indirect nod to one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Anyone who's seen The Shining has to notice the stark similarity between the shot of Megan standing in the red hallway and the iconic shot of the Grady twins from Stanley Kubrick's classic film. It might be just a coincidence that Megan mirrors The Shining before really getting her killing spree going. Then again, Megan seemingly has enough self-awareness to realize that, at least from the perspective of the humans around her, she's transformed into a horror movie villain. Maybe her posing in the hallway is a sign that she's ready to finally embrace her role as the movie's true antagonist. Whatever the in-universe explanation is, the filmmakers behind Megan took the opportunity to include a nod to one of the true greats of the genre. The Shining isn't the only Stanley Kubrick film that had a clear influence on Megan. Among other things, 2001 A Space Odyssey is a classic movie about an AI taking its prime directive too far. HAL 9000 is a ship-based computer designed to assist humans on a mission to explore the stars. But when the original plan goes awry, HAL actually ends up threatening the life of the human it was supposed to help. Megan's journey doesn't exactly mirror HAL's, but her words do. Near the end of the film, Katie has a change of heart and decides that Megan needs to be stopped. She orders Megan to shut down, but the android responds, Oh, I'm afraid that won't work anymore, Katie. Any fan of 2001 A Space Odyssey recognized the similarity between that line and Hal's unforgettable response when Dave asks him to open the pod bay doors. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Hal has inspired countless robotic villains over the 50 plus years since he first graced the big screen. With her line in this movie, Megan proves the point that great artificial minds think alike. Megan clearly riffs on other movies that feature an AI big bad, but not every one of the movie's influences landed on the big screen. Fans of the film pointed out on Twitter that Megan's distinctive voice sounds an awful lot like the AI characters from the Portal franchise. I thought you were my greatest enemy, but all along you were my best friend. Adding just a bit of auto-tune to a human voice goes a long way toward making it sound sinister and robotic. Megan pairs that technique with the voice acting talents of Jenna Davis to phenomenal effect. Megan's dance moves might be the most memorable part of her character, but her overall menace and personality are entirely sold by her signature voice. Oh, Katie, I didn't want you to have to see this. But now that you have, you know that what I said is true. There's another small vocal detail that audiences might easily overlook on a first watch. Megan's voice becomes noticeably less human as she becomes more violent and obsessive. In the movie's calmest moments, Megan really does sound awfully human, which definitely helps Katie form such a strong bond with her. However, by the time that Megan is stabbing and slicing through anyone who gets in her way, she almost sounds like GLaDOS when she delivers a terrifying yet somehow still humorous monologue. Let me focus on Katie, so that you can focus on the things that matter most to you. 